This week's episode is sponsored by Change. Change is an online mentoring program that teaches people with no experience how to create a real profitable online business and e-commerce. I have been working with Ryan at Change for a few years now and attended many events and got to meet the amazing community of like-minded people. These guys are the best of the best. The support these guys offer is personal, no bots or employees, there's no experience needed, but like anything in life, it takes time as it's a real business with real results. For more information, go check out Ryan on Instagram at RyanJB and he will guide you through the steps to help build a successful business. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you are notified for when my next podcast goes live. Boom, we're on. And today's guest, what are they calling you the internet terror, Mizzy? How are you? Hello, I'm all right. I'm not the internet terror anymore. I've decided to change my title. I'm now a philosopher. Good on you. Listen, these interviews are to get a bit of understanding about you and not what I mean to portray. I see you on Piers Morgan, social media. It's kind of to target you. And I'm just here to get your story, understand a bit about you. I know you're a father and stuff as well. So before we get into everything, no, I always like to go back to the start of my guests. Where you grew up, how it all began. Well, I grew up in Hackney, um, Stamford Hill. Literally, that's where I began. I was born in Homer and I've been raised here my whole life, so I literally haven't moved on at all. What about parents? Um, so I've lived with my mum my whole life and I've had two sisters. Obviously, my dad was not in my life. Are you ever in contact with your dad? Not at all. Do you see a lot of that? What not really, you? like I just progress with my life and how it is, isn't it? Like it's just something that happened. I, I got in contact with him and then the first moment I spoke to him, it was money. It was all about money. And then that made me come to a realisation that everyone's so drained into the society, all they care about is money. You haven't spoken to your son in time and you're calling him, asking him for money. That's a bit wild. What was it like? Were you nervous reaching out to your dad? Like at the start, I was happy. I was like, yeah, I'm getting to finally speak to my dad. And then he's just like, money. And then I'm like, oh, like you're just like everybody else. All of these brainwashed matrix bots, essentially. What about school? School, um, my school in history is very good. So obviously in primary school, um, in year five, they were pressuring me to get my SATs done so I could move up to um, secondary school in year five. It was mad. Um, like when I went into year six, instead mm-hmm. of being year six, I would have been in year seven. But I was like, no, I just want to be with everybody else. I don't care about the education system like that. But I passed all my stats. I literally passed them top grades. Like it was out of 120, I got 118. It was crazy. And then in secondary, I went to five different schools. I got kicked out of schools every single like academic year. But I was still the top of my class set, one in every subject. Then I passed all my GCSEs in a boxing school. Like all of my GCSEs. Compared to all the diversions that were around me, everyone's distracted. I still managed to keep my own and pass it without even studying. Because I don't study. I, my studying is just intuition, subconscious thoughts, and then fact checking. Memory? Memorization? Memorization. What about your mum? Mm, my mum, so obviously my mum has her own life and obviously she's been through the system and a lot of people don't know what the true matrix is. So when they're going through the system and then they're already brainwashed, they're essentially a brainwashed matrix. But like my mum didn't understand the angle that was coming out and I understand her. She's like everybody else. She's trying to say, oh, you can't do this. You can't do that. Why can't I do that? Society norms. And obviously I... I'm here for the society. I'm not trying to break laws and all of that stuff. But I was a product of my environment, essentially. Like, my chakras were blocked. And everyone around me was just trying to bring me down, tell me, alter me into their reality, trying to tell me, you have to do this to survive. You have to make money. You have to, like, all of this is man-made constructs. And everyone's so sucked into the system, they can't even see it themselves. They're literally trapped. The man them that trapped, they're trapped. When did you start looking at about chakras and stuff? Especially for a young kid to be speaking about chakras and... How, what, what, what was the awakening? Does your mum have crystals in the house or does she? Crystals, I don't do none of that. 
So what? How did you look into start looking into chakras? That's all, that's all dark stuff. That's all harnessing energy that you don't even know where the energy is coming from because you don't know your true energy. Where I started looking into it from was I was spiritually enlightened by my friend, Professor Skitz. Um, he used to do a lot of psychedelics, and then one time he told me to try one, like mushrooms in it. And obviously, since then I've never had mushrooms because I've gotten what I wanted out of it. Because I'm a really smart guy. It was just I needed to get links together. And throughout my whole spiritual like trip, it was just telling me I need to get links together. I need to get links together. But I didn't know what the links were truly. The link is everything. Literally, we are all linked. All religions, all of this, Taoism, Chinese, all the Jewish people, Christians, they're all linked. It literally starts with the three main Abrahamic religions. And it goes deeper than even that. The three main religions, then the two spiritual religions, Hinduism, and Buddhism, to go to one, Zoroastrianism, and then zero, nothing. Nothing is everything. There's been so many philosophers before me that have literally said these things. Albert Einstein, reality is merely just an illusion. Everything is an illusion. It's what you make it. We make our own life story. What do you think life is? Life is what we make of it. What do you think humans are? Humans are... Oh, this, I've been doing the recent studies because I'm, I'm writing a book in it. But essentially, Adam and Eve, the first humans, was the result of the original sin. They ate the tree of knowledge through temptation. Temptation is in this society is money, is the antichrist, is these all of these diversions. Everyone around us is temptation. So Adam and Eve, they ate the fruit, and then they it was like yin and yang. The original energy, but all energies and vibrations. So it's yin and yang. And it's like that's why I said everything is so linked, and it makes so much sense. But you just gotta really deep it to make it make sense. Have you ever tried DMT? No, I don't really need to try any other drugs. DMT. So the ancient Egyptians used to do a lot of these psychedelic drugs and they would see deities or gods. Like, and then that's what they built their whole, everything around like the pyramids. We don't, we still haven't made a pyramid to this day. Like we don't know how the technologies, they had advanced technologies. And that's because they were all spiritually awoke and they got to that next level where they could progress this whole society. And that's what my job is for. Do you know what the pineal gland does? Pineal gland is your third eye, the yeah. sixth chakra. So they say that's the seat of the soul. Mm -hmm. So it's in the brain. So with calcify it by milk they put it in your milk they put it in your toothpaste that's why people should go to fluoride free because your gums is so they said most they say because your gums are so sensitive it can go straight into the bloodstream through the gums and what happens is it kills the pineal gland when babies are born you see them looking around and dogs they'll have spiritual energies where they apparently can Let see me different dimensions explain the story so i was proving a point to my boys about the spiritual side of every reality a baby went past with him with his mum and the mum was like, watch out for like all of these like objects basically. And then I said to the kid, like I just said it out loud, but the kid was looking at me. The kid was like two, three, the kid didn't know nothing. I said, watch out for all of these diversions in your reality. And he looked at me and he just looked at me. Like he knew what I was saying. Like I, I felt the energy that he, the little kid, this little kid. So what I've learned is that Adam, yeah, he got put down into earth and he was Adam and Eve were there and they were bored. They had nothing. Nothing is everything. They created everything from the nothing they had. And this is what this whole world is. But how do you know Adam and Eve even exist? Everything existed. Everything is nothing. It's all just a cycle. It's called a life cycle for a reason. We cycle every time. So there's all these stories. That's why I say all religions are linked. It's the truth. But because we're in this society and no one knows how to decipher the truth because we're around distractions, diversions, people around us enticing us, trying to say you have to get a job, bringing you back into the matrix system. You get a job, you're trapped in the system. You're going around and around, getting more and more money just to pay for the system, taxes, all of that. You're literally playing the game, but you're playing the game wrong. I'm, listen, I'm all for this chat because I believe, I just question everything. I always say, it. unless I see it with my own eyes, it's a conspiracy because everybody can feed you information about the earth, the moon, whatever it is. We just genuinely don't know what the fuck else is out there. Seven days. That. God created the earth in seven days. In the Bible, a day is not 24 hours. It's just known as a day and night cycle, like the morning and the night. I see the, the stages, the days that God created the earth in is as stages. We have seven chakras, main chakras. We are the universe. God created each and every single one of us as the stages. And when Adam and Eve broke his one rule, the only one thing he said is don't eat that apple. And they ate it, the temptation, the snake, the devil, temptation. They got put into this reality, this earth. From there, those two were the original people and all of the, all of the creation stories are linked and they all say Adam and Eve is the original people. When you start adding things and start like literally, look, the time is 13, 13, angel numbers, yeah? I was going to show you something. Look, I'm literally writing so much stuff. 
when you go down the realms, yeah, that I'm going, like, bro, reality is merely an illusion. So how do you think people should be living life? Because there's a lot of murder, a lot of destruction, a lot of misery out there in the universe. People seem confused. Addiction, mental health through their eyes. So for you, who's been on this planet not not a long time, but what do you think how humans should be living it a better life? starts with linking all religions. Religion is the biggest social divide. Everyone, like there's Muslims, Christians, Jewish people, and then some people hate Jewish people, think they take over the world, this, that, and the other. So many different contradicting thoughts. But if you deep their religions, they all believe in one, God. They all have some sort of stories. Like I've literally, you see the book that I'm writing? Everything I'm saying is logical, it's come from my subconscious. Then I go on the internet and it's the exact same thing. There's a Bible quote that proves it, or a Quran quote that proves it, or a Torah quote that proves it, or some old scripture. I'm learning about some the original book. Oh, it's mad. It's actually mad. And law of attraction, like my book has 33 chapters. Jesus died at 33. The universe was made in 333. Oh my days, bro. Are you smoking weed? Stopped. Why? It's blocking my chakras. Everything has a block. Yeah, fair play for stopping smoking it because people can glorify it and think it's normal and things that keeps them calm and see different dimensions. A drug is a drug. It's about altered, rea altered reality. So everyone perceives drugs as this thing that's going to twist out your brain. You're going to see things. You're going to feel scared. All of these things are made. From Adam and Eve, they didn't make nothing. They made nothing with, uh, from everything. And everything is nothing. So everything we're making right now is literally what we make. We speak it out into the universe. We manifest this energy. And everything we're manifesting is going to happen. All these subliminal Simpsons, they predict the stuff. They pull it in there to water down people's like knowledge on things. Not even knowledge. Just so you've seen it before. So it's not really that bad. Like, like, so much, I don't know. I don't even watch Simpsons like that. I don't, I don't go into the conspiracy side. Everything just comes from me. I just keep it real and I just say what it is. And a lot of the time it's right. Like I, no one can argue with me when I say what it is. And then when they try to divert into a situation that doesn't relate to it, or they're trying to go back on what I've already shut them down on, it just proves my point exactly. What did you do after school? An apprenticeship as a chef. What happened? Passed it got my qualification and now I'm just living. Like I just wanted to get a qualification so no one could say that, oh, you didn't do nothing after school. Um, I want to study philosophy in university. So what's made you go down to philosophy? Do you look up in stoicism? I haven't looked up, not much, but it's just been the subconscious thought telling me to go down this realm. Like obviously it's, it's a call to action, it's the hero's journey. Every day we get some sort of call to action, maybe a friend coming to us telling us, look, I'm getting messages, diversion techniques. Let me turn this off for a minute. Every time we get um, a call to action from someone saying, oh, um, don't you notice that this is kind of weird or some sort of thing that's not of the ordinary. And then to us normal people, us altered brainwashed people, we're like, you're crazy. We automatically say the people that are thinking what everyone's subconsciously thinking, we call them crazy. But consciously we're calling them crazy. Subconsciously we're thinking this guy isn't crazy because what is word crazy? We don't know. Crazy is a word we made. The human language is literally spells. That's why magic, occult, all of that, they literally just said the things and they believed that it was happening because they were all up in the higher level spiritually awoken and then they made things happen. It's the same as writing. That's why they call it spelling because you're putting spells into the universe. If you write it down, goals, visions, it becomes 60% clearer and more likely to happen. That's why it's called spelling. And that's why, why do you think they broadcast spells on the TV? They broadcast the spells to you on the TV and everyone is trapped under their spell, magic spell. And there's so much different things like Harry Potter, like there's so much subliminals in Harry Potter to make magic seem like it's just fake. More magic ones, nah, nah, nah. magic is real, it's just energy manipulation. Yeah, and if, if anything that we are, even us sitting here, everything's been brought into existence by thought or speaking it into existence. This is life. And it, a lot of people, this is why these podcasts are so good because people will not just see you as a fucking nuisance who's running about the streets causing mayhem. There's actually a lot more depth to you and a lot more understanding. You are still young. Maybe you'll look back in 10 years and go, fuck me. But then again, if you never done the shit that you've done, you wouldn't be sitting on this wouldn't podcast. have a platform to share the message. It's everything happens for a reason. I obviously took accountability for my actions, whatever I've done, it's all in the past. Past, present, future, we make it. So everyone that's dallying on my past, they are trying to make my past. I'm not dallying on my past, I live in the moment. And that's how everyone should live. We should all live in the moment, trying to focus on our dreams and goals and not dallying on other people's realities. But it's the power of now. There's a book you should read, Deckard Toll. I always promote it on here, it's the power of now. Try to live in the present moment. The brain can't multitask, it doesn't think past, present, future. 
So if you're in the moment, you don't get, if you think about the past, it's depression, fear, guilt, and anxiety, all the negative thoughts, the same as the future, because 99% of the stuff that people actually worry about never comes into fruition anyway. So if you enjoy the present moment, like a dog, dogs are the happiest things on this planet. Why? Because they're in the moment. You could shout at a dog and it will only be upset for a couple of seconds, then straight back into being happy state. We're all, we're all energies. Everything matter. All of this, this is matter. Energy, energy. Everything's energy. Just like when something drops, it's manipulation of energy with the particles. That's why time travel is merely a construct. It's in the mind. Past, present, and future is in the mind. So if you dally on a past, you can make a past. If you dally on a future, you can make a future. That's where it is. Reality is merely an illusion. Actually, like you make your own life story. That's why it's called a life story. The hero's journey. Everyone has their own hero's journey. It's just what way you go about being the hero. When you're speaking like this from a young kid, how do people around you who you've grew up with see you? That's crazy. They're like, what are you talking about? But I make it so, <laughs> like, it's, it's crazy, you like. It's uh, crazy. Listen, I, I just got a prison. Oh, no. I was uh, coming off, of, I was bad on the gear and the booze and I was going through a journey. They said it was a spiritual awakening. I done a Reiki course. I was sitting in this fucking living room, like a room like this with six old women and I, I, I grew a top knot and, and uh, I was standing with my little fucking certificate saying I'd passed my Reiki, a Reiki master. And the comments, he's losing his mind. He was He's crazier now than he was when he was in prison. It's just because I just changed something fucking. They say it was a spiritual awakening. I don't know why I was it's sitting a doing a Reiki thing. course and talking about chakras and the pineal gland. And I was buying incense and I was trying to clear out spirits. And I was fucking, it was, it maybe did. Listen, my life is going amazing now. So whatever I changed. People did call me crazy, but now people want to know how I changed. Everyone wants your knowledge once you get enlightened. It's literally what it is. Once you know what it really is and everyone calls you crazy, they still want to talk to you. That's what it is. So crazy. They call you crazy, but they want to talk to you. I am not crazy. I am perfectly sane. I think I'm the smartest man in this world. Yeah, why not? You be Anything you think and you believe as well. What was your first viral video? My first viral video? It was a bus riding video. Obviously, I jumped on the back of a bus. And like I was holding, there was a little like compartment, I was holding onto it. And I made a video, oh, if you don't have money to travel, because like I'm, I'm raising the hood in it. So it, it, sometimes it's digs and jokes because I do, I can spend the money on the stuff I want. But we're in this matrix, we're in this society. They literally give us the money and tell us to spend the stuff. So it's literally breaking social constructs kind of. But I don't mean to do it in a bad way. And I didn't know what I was doing when I was doing it. But now I know what it is. That's why I don't really do pranks anymore. But essentially... I've held onto the back and I've made the video. The video went viral overnight. Millions of people, all the meme pages are reposting it. Everyone's hating, everyone's loving it. But hate it or love it, you're still going to watch it. And as soon as you add engagement to your video, it goes up. And then from that moment, I saw how it works. I just progressed from there. But I think there was such a big outroar, uproar when your videos was going viral there with like, the dog and coming into houses. Fair. Listen, I've seen pranks and some of your stuff's actually PG to some people who actually do mad shit I, obviously listen it can be a bit much i get it get into folks homes i listen i wouldn't like any cunt come into my home no matter what race no matter what fucking religion no matter what gender you'd be thinking what the fuck is going on here yeah. you're not daft you know the drill but why did you think your stuff got so much of an uproar why was there so much it's fucking fair tactics. it's what the media does it's subliminal messages and fair tactics now like this right here is a fashion statement everyone talks about it they hate on it whatever whatever but they still talk about it adding engagement to these algorithms a fair tech a fair tech fair technique is essentially when you see something that's kind of shocking and it's morally wrong you subconsciously know it's morally wrong but consciously you don't really care because you're already altered so you don't really like this reality is weird for everybody when you see it and you're going through it, you get angry subconsciously, then you comment on it. That's why I don't really engage in things because nothing on the internet can trigger me. So we're going through it and then you engage in it because you're subconsciously angry. But in, in real life, you're just going through things, you're on your phone, you're playing a game right now, you're going on your phone. Oh, 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 someone's doing something bad, you're typing on it, you're subconsciously engaging with it because you're, well, who's controlling the fingers? You're controlling it. What's the word? There's no words coming out. The words are in the, the scripts. That's why I like writing everything down because it's in my head, I just have to write it down. Like, look at all of these angel numbers, bro. They're angel numbers, bro. So there's a man called Dr. Amoto. So when I was doing my Reiki course, there was an interpreter came and gave out the certificates. The man called Dr. Amoto, he used to take photos, he used to, little bits of glass, drop photos, water on them, and then freeze it. And this might sound crazy, but he used to speak to the water. I love you. 
you are the best. And they used to speak negative to other ones and take photos. The ones they spoke negative to was like yellow and orange. The ones they spoke beautiful to were like crystals. There's a jam jar test you can do. Put rice in two jam jars. Say I love you to one for 30 days and I hate you to one for 30 days. The one you say I hate you is all black, blue and mouldy. The one you say, you say I love you to is still pure white. So speaking energy, words is, is powerful. It's literally, literally manifesting the energy, you're telling it I hate you. So it's, it's, it's feeding that energy that you're yeah. giving it. But we get caught up in a society where we do speak shit. I still get angry. I still get triggered. My life is going great, but you still, we're in a game. We just don't know. Like I'm doing this. It's all about views. Mm. You're going to bring views. So it's a business as well. So it's I need to feed the kids. I need to get home. I need to travel. And so it's just, it's we can, society. we can it's never live in peace. We're it's not, what we've made it to be. And now we just got to live in it. But we don't have to live in it the way we're living in it. And that's what I'm here to change. What was the biggest uproar video you done? Was it the get into that house? Yeah. And that even there was proof. When I said the UK laws are weak on Piers Morgan, I didn't mean it like, oh yeah, fuck all laws. I meant it simply as they need the refining. They're just wrong. I walked into that house, it's trespassing. Trespassing in the UK is a civil offence. You can't get arrested for it unless you stay past them telling you to leave. If they tell you to leave and you stay, aggravate your trespass, criminal offence. I left as soon as they told me to leave. So I wasn't even going to get arrested for the video. It's only because I breached my community protection notice they placed a year prior. I didn't even remember that I had that. That's how the Matrix gets you. They give you things from before that I didn't even remember I had that. And then they've just sprung it onto me again saying, oh, you breached this for this video. But they made that video go viral because the mainstream media, they made that video go viral. They're like, oh, he breached it. Let's get him arrested. Send him to prison. Start the arc. It's literally the hero's journey. Have you ever spoke to that? couple who you how she went into i literally went there the next day off social media because the video blew up on tiktok before it blew up on the news on the internet i went there the next day because i saw it blew up on tiktok and it was getting backlash raw whatever i don't care about that but i was like oh it's peak i didn't even i actually make videos and post them i don't even look at the videos again that's why i don't when people ask me oh well i don't like do you want to look at the video i don't look at it just post it i even see the kid i didn't even see that you could see the kid in the video like like that and the house it was all just looking mad so when I posted it, I posted it for a reason, to get the views, to get the backlash. But when I saw the backlash and then I realised the video, I went there the next day, literally just off cameras, whatever, in the morning, knocked on the door and apologised straight up. What did they say? She recorded it. She got her phone out straight away. I think she was going to, she thought I was probably going to do some dodgy dealings. But obviously when I actually got to the point and she felt the energy that I was portraying, she just realised that I'm a good person. I, I just done it for like stupid reasons. And then she was just like, yeah, you're young, this, that and the other. Uh, you don't know how much distress you caused. We had kids in the house. We came to our understanding and we left it like that and everyone was happy. What about the dog one? Dog one, I gave back the dog. The, like literally there's a whole... <laughs> yeah. Listen, I'm laughing because it is fucked up. I love my dog. Mm. The last, my dog's a Rottweiler. Nobody's going to pick him up, but... <laughs> I can see your madness behind it. I can see you're, 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 you're here saying it's for views, it's for clicks. I get that. But you can also see the women, the dog being scared and why people are going to be so fucking upset. 100%. But it's, it's even crazier than this. There's always context behind things. The woman already knew who I was. She said that my, her grandson watches me on TikTok. The dog, like, but she said that after this bit thing that happened right now, the dog kept coming up to us, coming up to us while we're eating in the middle of the park. We're just sitting in the grass, nice hot day. Dog kept coming up to us trying to eat our food. I've told the woman, can you take your dog? Like, it's jarring. She's like, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. This came back like four different times. And then I'm like to her, oh, if you don't take your dog, I'm going to take your dog. Literally simple as. And then that's when she came up with the, oh, I know who you are. My grandson watches you on TikTok. It's weird. Like, everything in reality works weird. But other people won't see it. And then they'll get you down because they don't have the full context. Who are you to talk about my life? You don't know my life. You only see what Mizzy, you only see my subconscious life on the internet. All those videos then came out together and then you were all over the, the media. People were fucking hating on you because it looks bad from the outside. That is bad, but you're putting your hands up. So it's not that fucking extreme. Like I say, I do see pranksters and they do some weird shit. But did you expect it to be so big? No, but everything happens for a reason. Like, I knew I was going to make it like into that scene. Like it's literally following cycles. I followed bad baby cycle with Dr. Phil and how she went on and said cash me outside but obviously she was dumb with the way she approached everything and then she had to go like she made a lot of money so she wasn't dumb but what is money like I've really trying to emphasize so she's dumb she went around the money route and tried to drain as much money out of this situation as she could and she ended up just falling off and resorting to OnlyFans making more money obviously but it's all about money to everybody and to me it's not about money and this is why I progress 
further than anybody else. Anyway, I dally done. I diverted. What what was the question that you asked? Yeah, did you realize how big the videos would have went? Yeah, so no, nah, but yeah, like I said, everything happens for a reason. I just posted because I posted, and then they was waiting for the right moment to be like, got you, and then put all of them together, put me on TV, start the cycle. What was it like going on Piers Morgan? What age are you, Mizzy? 18. So you're still a kid. You might not like being, but you are still a kid. But yeah, okay. you, you, conducting interviews and shouting and screaming, and the guy with the bow tie seems a bit of a sausage and saying he was going to grab you. The woman beside her, she actually messes me. Is it Talk TV? Mm -hmm. Is it Nicola? Wait, what, the one beside me or the one beside him? The one beside him. Yeah, Nicola. She's nice. She messes me, but people shouldn't be acting like that. There's then that If they're moaning at you for stealing a dog and taking it back and getting into a house and then going and apologise, they're actually worse the way they've spoke to you and the stuff that you've actually done. Mm -hmm. Because everything's about guidance they should be learning nobody's perfect Piers Morgan knows some fucking dark shit in this world no, we can, I mean? he's a narcissist within himself but essentially I just come from prison like not prison I came from cells two days in cells for a, 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 a yeah came from prison two days in cells whatever I'm just rambling let me start again I came back from cells two days no sorry <laughs> I was in cells for two days and then I came out and Kieran um he's part of Piers Morgan's team or whatever he reached out to me and it was just like we want you on TV first we want you on international TV we're going to get you on there first we'll get you a cab from the station just come and be on Piers Morgan obviously I'm a lone wolf so I don't even ask anyone for advice everyone was tell when, I when they saw after they're like you shouldn't have went on he grilled you this and the other but in my eyes it's just comedy like everyone was laughing at it some people like that was funny and I just went on with the intention of just trying to be me and obviously when I was trying to talk he just kept deflecting and that's what gets me mad. People don't let me talk. So when you're not letting me talk and when I'm trying to prove my point and speak the context behind the situation, they just divert in, into their own reality, which is diverting my reality. And then it goes into an argument. That's why I say I don't argue anymore. I just debate because I can shut down everybody. But you don't need to argue. This is the thing about life. If you've got if you've got an religion you follow and I don't agree with it, I'm not going to force mine onto you. Everybody sees the world differently. We're all raised differently. We're all different beings. We're all just in this fucking vessel where we don't know what the fuck's going on, the majority of people. But you can disagree with people. The only thing with narcissistic and egos get involved is everybody tries to overpower everybody and then the conflict starts. You can disagree with people and that's okay. I interview murderers and drug lords and fucking bank robbers. I don't argue with them. I'm just there to tell their story. I'm not saying you've done wrong and you scared this woman and you, you robbed this bank and you... It's not my job. You my just have job. to get the perspective of exactly. the person. That's all did you, how did you feel? Uh, did they pay you to go on that interview? No, they didn't ask for money. Did they... How were they after? How was Piers after the, when the cameras went off? Before, I didn't, I didn't even see him before when it went live. He literally gave me the dirtiest look. He looked at me up and down. Then we went live, bang, look, angel numbers again. Essentially, after it now, I've come off and he's just looked at me. And he didn't even say nothing to me. It was just like, you can go now. Like, that's mad. That is mad within itself. Yes, but basically, like I say... You and essentially, like I want to say one thing first. This is not Illuminati. This is a Kuda Mudra. They used it in Hinduism and Buddhism. It's a sign of power, and it literally grounds you to the earth. It connects your circuit, your bodily circuit. Yeah. It's, oh, that's all you need to know. Yeah, because people... I had Andrew Tate on last week in Romania, and he's doing the same sign, and people are saying he's part of the Illuminati. Right, no you need to be I, I shake people's hands before a podcast and they're saying it's masonic handshakes that's just a fucking handshake what they mean by that is it's literally just transmitting energy every time you touch someone you're transmitting some sort of energy and it's whether you let the energy that you want to transfer to them so as soon as you go if it's a firm handshake you're both coming to a firm agreement if you do if someone else does a firmer handshake than you they're trying to suck your energy that's why you feel a bit depleted after that and it goes vice. it's literally what it is mm -hmm. Talk TV one. It seemed to have went in your favour though, that one with the girl Nicola and the guy with the bow tie. He was shouting he was going to drag you out with the hair. Listen, he couldn't fucking drag anything him. I, I found that cringe. I didn't like that because I felt as if, I don't know, he's trying to be something he's not. No doubt he's probably a nice man. But you, don't speak, you don't speak to people like that. He was trying to be a Piers Morgan, bro. Because obviously, look, in the numbers again, now it's just mad, bro. Because even look at my, like, just the, my whole aesthetic and just who the person I am and, like, how what angel numbers represent, bro. Like, you got a deep here. Obviously, numerology was made by the Babylonians. I'm going into a tangent. Sorry, what was the question? No, the guy who... Talk about numerology because it's important. Yeah, literally, numbers was... The numbers signs. is the key to the universe. It's signs and it's call to actions as well. So I see a lot of angel numbers and to me, I take it as a call to action to continue 
what I'm doing because I'm doing right. It's literally what it is. But when you have the call to action, then you meet the mentor. I would say the mentor of me was Andrew Tate. Like he didn't really tell me anything. He just told me what stick to your beliefs, stay karma, sound less hood. Once he told me three things. Free, free, one, free, free. Told me three things, bro, and it literally progressed from there. Yeah, being calm, it shows confidence. Being erratic and shouting and doing all the daft shit, it shows weakness. Do you know what I mean? So it's to be understanding. You're still young. You're still learning. But if you're talking about numbers, these is I believe there's signs as well. I believe everybody's always got signs. A certain smell, a certain sign that you see. It's a guidance. Everybody's being guided, but everybody's when you talk about chakras, everybody's chakras are blocked through. Sex, alcohol, through the matrix. Drugs, it's just the matrix. Through the matrix. Caught up, and it's not that people are bad, but if you're conditioned, as soon as you're given birth, as soon as you're born, you're given labels straight away. You're given names. You're given religions. You're given even grow football team. <laughs> From the moment up. you're born, you're literally copyrighted into the system with a birth certificate. <clears throat> yeah, you're straight into the system. I believe that. Listen, I get everything you're saying. So, see, after all the interviews, when they talk, the talk TV interview, how were you feeling when he started shouting? Actually, I was just like raw because like at the start, before we even went on to the thing, yeah, obviously I wasn't tuned into the industry as much. I don't need media training. I just need experience and being in there. So obviously I wasn't tuned into it. So when I've come, before I've come on, they've all taken pictures of me. They're all trying to nice me up. Yeah. So I feel like I'm comfortable there. Then when I backed out that little message, I said, everyone was just shocked in the room. They didn't know that what I was saying, like they didn't know how intelligent I was. So he was literally like... He literally just looked at me like, raw. I don't know how I'm going to get this guy out. Then he found the perfect thing because I was doing the weird stuff, looking at people. But I looked at him, I looked at everybody in the room and even she was smiling when I was looking at her. And he used that as the perfect moment to try to paint a picture that I'm threatening women. And then everyone will go with it. Yeah, because that just makes you, them in the right and you in the wrong. But it seemed to have went in your favour. Because I said, I, I, I respect you. At the end. I, I, said, I say everything for a reason. I said to her, I respect you. And I just got up and left after he went on his tangent. You spoke about the racism card as well, that people are targeting you because you're black. Do you believe that or was that another thing? No, I believed, I firmly believe that because essentially, like, I don't I don't discriminate. I'm calm with Jewish people in my area. I'm calm with black people, white people, Asian people, Indian people, any type of people. So to me, everyone that's trying to talk down to me when I'm trying to do things good, when I haven't, I've already apologised for it. I ran a long apology. I went on the news everywhere. Everyone, I was already cancelled on these social platforms. I already went through the bad side, the villain side, and now I'm trying to do good, everyone's still attacking me. It's because of the picture they've already been painted in their mind. Their reality has already been altered. But you look at Andrew Tate, he's white. His dad's black. Him. His dad's black, but he's white. So, I think, do you believe if it was a white kid stole the dog and went into the house, it wouldn't have got as much backlash? 100%, because I've seen, I've seen videos of that. Yeah, listen, that's a possibility. Listen, it's London. So getting into a flat, getting into a house and being black, listen, no doubt there's probably been more, they'd be more scared if it's a white couple, no doubt. But a lot of people will say, listen, it doesn't matter if you're being a dick, you're being a dick, no matter what. Yes, it is of being a dick. It's actually societal norms. You see a black person walking into your house and you see everything you've seen about black people in the past, you're, all, you're automatically, because of your brainwashed mind, going to paint a picture on them like and that's what stereotyping is it's painting a picture on a already altered mind all of these things have been made to divert us from the truth it's so simple it's right in front of your eyes when was it you were running along oxford street? was it oxford street or running up? was that after everything or was that old videos it was an old video but they're all coming to the surface and people think they're new it's part of the mizzy experiment i literally plan the mizzy experiment is an experiment on the theoretical matrix i literally from young like everything happens for a reason i didn't even know what i was doing from like 13 14 i just wanted to have a plethora of videos that were gonna cause some sort of shock value and get people to talk have subliminals in it whatever and people will always have those videos repost those videos in the future when i'm doing different things and then it will just be put in a folder and one guy will have it professor and he just does his thing with that what about your rapping? Um, so obviously I dropped one song, We Outside, and that was just a little TikTok song. I made it with some group that just wanted to make a song with me. And obviously everyone's in this money game. So I said, you can have all the profits for this song. I don't care about that. I literally gave them the whole right to the song. Then now I'm making a new song. It's called TikTok Terror. This one's a single because I made the other song with um, the professor. But this one's a single. This one's going to go on GRM. This one's going to do crazy. It's called TikTok Terror. What age is, your son? is that a son you've got? Mm -hmm. How old? nine months now just a baby mm -hmm. how hard is it to try and 
be a father at a young age and try and provide and protect because that's what we're here for very hard so how do you separate from being i'll tell you the only reason why it's hard because because of the mother's brainwashed mentality that's the only reason it's hard parenting is easy parenting just nowadays has just been seen as hard because everybody else tries to alter your perspective on parenting it's easy as long as you have good vibes good energy with your kid you're taking your kid out buying your kid the things he needs not the things he wants then when you get to the point where you can buy the things he wants you can buy that don't worry about money because money is what's going to get you in this trap and so essentially what i was trying to show her is that and when i told her that i was on the phone to her i said i'm, I'm gonna go see her today still um i literally told her like you're literally being brainwashed in the system she does by herself but she also gets random social services trying to get involved in her life that's matrix attacks society attacks trying to get you stuck in a system trying to block your chakras and trying to divert your attention from the real causes and issues in this universe so when i told her that she realized that she was like raw you're actually right like she actually agreed with me for once it's mad when you actually calm down and speak what you want to speak people listen so i've told her that and then she's like, yeah, you're right. So she canceled child maintenance. She was trying to put me on child maintenance. I was like, money again, you only want money. Like she literally sent her, sent me her sort code and all of that, like, oh, diversion technique. She sent me all of that to just say, oh yeah, you need to give me money. You need to give me money for our child. You need to give me money. You need to give me money, not provide for my child. I just need to give her money. And then that's all she cares about. She don't care about me seeing my child. She doesn't mention, oh yeah, you need to come see your child. Just give me money. Yeah, you need to be careful though because a lot of single parents are struggling and the thing with being a single parent the kid is more likely to be involved in addiction prison this the, the 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 percentage of having a fucked up life is is more likely to happen without the father not being there so as, as a woman remember when you're going through changes as well and seeing the world a bit different and looking at numbers not everybody sees it the way you do mm -hmm. so you need to be careful that you don't preach as well because a lot of people aren't ready. All you can do is lead by example. So for me, it's, it's leave actions and people go, fucking, he has changed. I used to see him stealing dogs. Now he's fucking actually making that. So change. I said to her, I literally shocked her whole mind. I literally apologized to her from the start of the conversation. That's why she listened to me. Then from there, whatever I said, I made it so logical that she understood it. And because, then that's why I'm meeting her. Because we can blame. But remember, as a single mother, the shit that they need to go through they genuinely don't have much money they're genuinely worrying about putting food in their kids baby uh food in your kids mouth and everybody's we're caught in a society where you talk about the matrix everybody's wanting to have some sort of nice clothes but as long it's difficult for them or when i've got two kids to two different women so it was always everybody was to blame i was a fucking idiot what this is is a fight it's a fight for the world isn't it? so obviously i got chapter three the true messiah so essentially God sent our energy down from earth to heaven to evolve, learn, and repent for the original sin. Messianism is the belief in the Messiah who acts as a savior for a group of people. Messianism originated as a Zoroastrianism belief, religious belief, and followed to Abrahamic religions. But other religions have Messianism related concepts. The three Abrahamic religions are all looking for Messiah in three different ways that are quite similar. Jesus are waiting for Jesus. I mean, Christians are waiting for Jesus' second coming. The Jews want someone who's a descendant from King David, and Muslims want two people at the same time, two subconscious and conscious together, two people at the same time, but they don't even know that. Other religions with a Messiah concept include the first original religion, Zoroastrianism, which all the three religions based off of, Buddhism, Hinduism, and Taoism, yin and yang, all of that stuff. It all relates to the original, we're all just energies, the yin and yang particles. According to, um, I don't even know how to pronounce it, I'm not going to pronounce it for Muslims to get onto me, but Muslims are waiting for the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, to come down from the heaven and the Mahdi, who would bring justice to the earth. They are waiting, they're all waiting for the Messiah to come and save everyone and spread God's true word. In Judaism, the Messiah's salvation is closely related to the idea of redemption, to be saved from the state that destroys the value of human existence. This matrix we live in, it destroys us, it diverts us from the true self. God, as the universal spirit and creator of the world, is the source of all salvation for humanity, provided an individual honours God by observing his precepts, his holy books, that's why I believe in all religions, everything that God's made, everything that everyone, the human mankind has made, is through God's word. We've all written it through some conscious, conscious thoughts, everything, God's word. His rules and 
it dictates the way we should act or behave. This means redemption or salvation depends on the individual and how truly you believe you want it. Like there's literally so many, like the Messiah has probably been here many different times trying to preach messages. Like so many different guys come and know the truth. They preach the messages to you and to, everyone's too blind to see it because of the character, the person in their altered reality they think you are. Like the perspective of the person you think you are. I am, sorry. Yeah, understand me, I'm trying to, yeah? But listen to me, actually you might actually listen. There's a quote here. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. Jesus clearly taught in John 3.16 that he will save anyone who believes in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. We are all God's children. God created us in his image. Yeah, Jesus, Adam was the first human. Adam was God's son. Adam ate the apple and denied all of his, like he broke God, his son, his father, main rule. And then he got sent into this earth. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This whoever includes you and every other person in the world. We all want the Messiah to come from heaven, but we are all missing the biggest factor. The heaven we all think we know because we are brainwashed is a metaphorical place for who knows what. We don't truly know what heaven is, so we can't assume that someone's going to fly down from the sky and start spreading God's words. I believe heaven is full enlightenment. And when you're full enlightened, you can start spreading God's message. And that's what all of these prophets, all of these supposedly gods that were on earth, all of these ancient Egyptians, all of them that were be believing in these people, they were just people that were spreading the word of God. Jews believe that when the Messiah comes, he will build the, rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. He will bring about the end of war so that everyone can live in peace. The war is this society, this matrix. We're all just fighting it. Everyone's trying to make it out. Making it out is trying to make it out of the matrix and making it out of this society. It will unite all people regardless of differences like religion or culture. That's why I believe in all religions. All religions are linked. Chakras, all of that is linked. Bring a true awareness of God to all people and signal the end of the world. Then it goes on to the Antichrist and how um, it means literally the deception. We are literally in the world of deception. Everything is an illusion. Reality is an illusion. There's so many illusions around you. All of these police sirens, blue and red, it triggers your head. It triggers the spiritual side. I haven't really gone down that to properly explain it, but it literally everything that happens is all divergence. I call it a, diver a diversion technique. So literally, the universe has been waiting for the Messiah since the beginning of time. If you believe in any religion, you believe that the Messiah will arrive back into earth and save us all. Everything is logically explainable. You just need to believe and unlearn everything you thought you knew. What do you think about reincarnation? I believe if the, those who don't believe in God's word, they have to stay in this living hell eternal hell so when you die you literally reborn energy doesn't die it gets converted your body dies but the energy just gets converted back into being a child again that's why children know the truth from when you're born you know the truth then you go through the society and you get dumbed down to die and go through the truth again dumbed down die go through the truth again it's eternal hell live in hell day of judgment we have days it's crazy yeah they talk about 21 grams so i think they've done a study with people who are going to pass away and they look weighed them and then when they pass, what happens is the body goes 21 grams lighter straight away. Everybody, which is fucking nuts. So they say 21 gra grams is like an energy. It's like a soul. A soul where it transfers into wherever else it goes. Well, 21, it. the opposite, like, the flip around 21 is 12. And there's 12 laws of the universe. This, this could be just going on a tangent or a conspiracy. But there's 12 laws of the universe that is literally how the universe works. So I think, like you said, that's a bit, that's a bit weird, don't you think? Yeah. That's why you got to stay open minded, and when you're, but you've got to be quite careful with music as well, because eight oh eights look up on. So eight oh eights is where every, your body's eighty percent, ninety percent water. So with the eight oh eights, with the beats, it can it doesn't poison you, but it gives you a frequency it's of a hate trance. and anger. It triggers you. So everything's. But people say it's conspiracies, this and that, but there's definitely something to it. Since I've not been drinking or taking drugs, I've seen the world a whole different way. way, different bro. way man. I literally, in this book, is the mad thing. I literally say so much stuff, but I'm not even going to say it on here. To what the book? Book's Your out. own book? It's called The Mizzy Experiment. I'm writing a book, yes. Do you think you're a prophet yourself? I don't care about the prophet, but this book needs to come out. Yeah, no doubt it will. But yeah. uh, obviously, I'll, I, I probably will profit from it because I'm going to do it for a publishing service. So I'll get the book paper back. No, do you but, see yourself as a prophet? I'm not, no. 
because you look at the religions as well there are a lot of them are diluted and when there's thousands of gods and thousands, thousands of religions there's so much goodness in them I get it but there's a lot of fucking dark stuff as well same as the Bible the guy Lot's his two daughters got him pregnant uh, two daughters got pregnant by their own dad there's a lot of dark satanic drinking blood and eating flesh there's a lot of weird shit in religions as it well it is literally the judgement like you literally go through this whole system you do bad things because you're like why are we trapped in this system why can't I do this why can't I do that so you do these bad things that the system wants you to do they have so much laws and regulations bylaws in place to wait for you to slip up so they can just hit you with bam yeah you've done this you've done that you've done this and then you're trapped you're trapped and you go through the law system you're trapped even further they just like to trap guys what do you think is outside death? The universe, the heavens, the actual heavens. Like he heaven's a metaphorical place for God knows what. But I feel like full enlightenment, full when you ascend, is literally you're ascending to heaven. Have you ever looked into the Antarctica? Yes. Well, no, I'm Admiral Barden. There's not many humans have been in Antarctica. You can't get through it. So there's a film there. called The Truman Show, Jim Carrey. You should watch. I'm going to send you a lot of shit as well. They... He's getting followed around with cameras 24-7 he doesn't even realise it. Everybody around him's actors. Mad. It's fucking mad. Well, that's why, bro, everybody is a diversion technique because everyone's wrapped into this matrix. Everyone is wrapped by diversions. So when they're walking down the road, they're literally like, ah, oh, yeah, let me mention this. This is called the perception illusion. This is a theory that I've made. I made this when I was walking down the road with my friends. I wasn't paying attention to anything in front of me or around me. I was just looking at one thing because it looked interesting. When I started to acknowledge my peripheral vision, it's like the vision that you focus on something and there's a vision around for the people. I, I, I started to realize everyone was moving a bit weird and that I was walking in a completely straight line the whole time, but everybody moved out of my direction. Like I was completely sure about where I was going, but everybody else was unsure. Like I was fully focused on that, but I was just walking completely straight. And because everybody, it's the energy, I'm, I'm a straight energy walking. All the other energies are seeing this energy, this fierce energy, just walking straight and not like focus on anything else. All these diversions, our hair and stuff, he's just focused. And then they're just moving out the way, just like subconsciously, they just move. So to prove my theory, I want to try, I want you all to try this when you're out. Whilst you're walking down the road, just look directly at an object above head height and distance. Keep focusing on that object whilst being aware of your peripheral vision, but don't lose focus on that object at all. Don't let no diversions take you. Don't let no police sirens, random ones that just go and then stop. Don't let nothing, no car, no nothing, no people, no phone, nothing distract you. Focus on something in the real world and just look at it, yeah? Don't you think everybody just looks a bit fake? They walk a bit fake. Their walking patterns are irrational. Their movements are predictable. It just looks like they're in a game trying to survive. Think about GTA. Think about NPCs on GTA and how they move and react to your character. NPC was made for a reason, yeah? People use it as bants. Oh, he looks like an NPC. They're using it for a reason subconsciously. They don't even know it. Bro, NPC means non-playable character in a game. In real life, NPC just means this brainwashed society, everyone's stuck in the matrix and they aren't in control of their own lives. They're playing their own game of life and I mean, they ain't playing their own game of life, they're playing somebody else's. This just proves Albert Einstein's point that reality is an illusion. Albert Einstein said it himself, bro. It's what you make of it. Everybody's just focused on one thing, trying to make it out, but they're focused on everybody else around them because they're diverted. They're seeing everybody else's movements, their energy shifts, and they're unaware of themselves. They're caught up in the illusion of the matrix and they don't know reality. Do you think this could be a metaverse? Like an avatar, we're in a game? Yeah. Because you look at people in the metaverse now with it, living a different life and the technology maybe just so advanced where this is just a game. Life does go so fast anyway. I, but I, I said that to Andrew Tate just last week in Romania. When people die, I've been around my father when he died and my great uncles when they've took their last breath. They don't struggle. It's like a relief. <sighs> they take a last breath of relief. They're not in pain. They're not struggling. They're not scared. It's like it's there's so a better place. Taken by God. It's literally God breathed. You see, when he made humans, he breathed into the humans to make them, bro. Like he made them out of clay and he breathed into them. And that's when we talk and we go, <sighs> it's we're literally breathing God's words. Everything is God's words. It's just, we're stuck in the day of judgment and we're trapped. And obviously everyone's thoughts and emotions are just... Confu everyone is confused everybody every single body is brainwashed and there will be a lot of people trying to come for me trying to hate me we can meet in person I could prove my point exactly to you what do you think of wars? 
they were made to for a, as a diversion technique, fair tactic. It's like my content. It's just a big fair tactic. Everything is a fair tactic, diversion technique. Who do you look up to? Nobody. Yeah, I'm the same. Wars are, for me, wars are murder. It's just innocent people dying left, right, and centre for the greed of the world. It mostly happens with religion. That's why I'm trying to link all the religions, bro. Like all the, it happens mostly over religion or trying to dominate one sort of country because they're not happy with their way of living or their type of. It's literally just social divides, and we bring it to. We give what it is. Every time someone speaks about a war, oh, it's going to happen. But there's no wars going to happen around here. Divide and conquer. If every man in a war was to put down their gun, there would be no wars. But again, people need to survive and eat in their mind. They think they're doing the right thing and fighting for their country and providing for their family. But it's the destruction it causes and the, the amount of people who are homeless on the street are veterans. They went to war to fight for their country, but yet they're homeless and nobody fights for them. And this is the society we're in. People are just so caught up in their own life and they don't really look into life as much. Maybe we're just looking into it too much. Well, we, I just questioned fucking everything. You've got to question everything. What do you, so have you always spoke like this? Have you always had that kind of... But yeah, but uh, the way I went about it... Are you scared to speak to. about it? No, it's, it's literally, if everybody believes, if all of these different religions believe in what they believe in, if you really truly believe in that, then it's going to happen. The prophecy is going to happen. And someone needs to come and save the world, essentially. What do you think you're learning the most? Get through your journey there now. That everybody is brainwashed. Every, like, every, like I'll be talking to even people that think they know things and I still break, shatter their points. And it's like, you think you know things because you do research on things, you study things, and that's how you don't know anything. Knowledge is literally rational. You're getting rational knowledge. As soon as you know something, it's there in your brain. It's like you can have an old memory. That's why when someone says, oh, do you remember that? They're bringing back that memory. All the memories are in your brain. You just need to unlock them. Gods were, like literally, the, when Adam was into this earth, he had all the knowledge. He had all the knowledge of a God, but he didn't know what to do with it. He was in the human, he was in human form, he couldn't do nothing. So what he done is he made everything from that nothing. It's scary all life, because we might all get it wrong. Everything you read could be all bullshit. Mm -hmm. It could, because it programs the brain. To, you mean you could read a paragraph and totally take positive or a negative from it? It's the way people see the world, it's the way people consume what they eat, what they speak, what they learn. But nobody has it figured out. I literally, I have a little thing about reality here. So obviously one of the paragraphs in my book is about reality. What is reality? Reality is our everyday life. Every single person has their own perception, understanding of reality through their own perspective, view. When we say no two people are the same, it is true. It goes deeper than true than just male and female because they're just energies, yin and yang. No two people are the same because everyone has different understandings of reality. Everyone has different dreams. Everyone has different ambitions. Everyone has different feelings, thoughts, emotions, perceptions on the thoughts, perceptions on the emotions, etc. It varies so differently from every single person. That's what the DNA, like, it literally goes deeper than that. The DNA is literally makes us our reality. We make our own life story. So I believe everybody is, no, I, yeah, that's just something else about the perception. Of when did Tristan and Andrew reach out to you? When I was cancelled the most. <laughs> it's fucked up how people get cancelled on it. You like, can't cancel someone that doesn't care. So obviously when I was cancelled... an illusion as well. Doesn't mean fuck all. You see people cancelling and actually think their life's over. Life still goes on. You've got a son. You, people, you don't cancel. There's only social media. Doesn't mean shit. It's an illusion. Where did you get cancelled from? From what? what like platforms? Yeah. Every single social platform. But it's weird because on TikTok, I used to talk about a lot of spiritual stuff before then. And then bam, they waited for the right time to hit me with the, the cancellation, which is the hero's journey. It's the hero's journey. Andrew Tate, it's me and the mentor, mental, Tristan. Because obviously when they saw the video, Tristan responded to the video like he just didn't like, he was like, yeah, um, I don't remember what he said, but he was just not happy about the video. I responded to his quote, his message, his tweet with a video. And that video is literally a direct calling out. But obviously he knew, he just knew I, I, what I was doing. Like it's creative mindsets. I just done a video calling him out, essentially saying, oh, don't you think I don't know where you live? I'll come to your house, tell Andrew I'm taking his Bugatti. Then he popped up to me and he messaged me. He was like, oh, um, let's go to private chat. Going to private chat now. He's like, send me your number. We're going, we're going to messages now on WhatsApp. And we're just still talking. I'm telling him like who I am. And he's realizing who I am because it's like, Energies, but you can really you can read someone's energy. So he's realized that I'm actually a good energy, like I'm not a bad guy for real. I just do stupid things. And he told me, 
the way I was going about things were wrong. Andrew mentioned the hero's journey. He literally just said one thing in the in the group chat. He was just like, hero's journey. Done my own research on that and I realised it's a trope that happens in so much movies. They do it in movies so then people don't believe it's true. But it's a trope that, that Harry Potter, even the Matrix with Neo, with Morpheus, all of that, it's cool to actions. It's mad though, isn't it? But like I say, you're still young and you're, you have got your head screwed on and this is why for these interviews, it's not a case of a shouting match. It's just a case of trying to understand you, what you think, how you feel. Do you think you can be took serious though because of your previous videos to what you're doing now and people go ah it's just a it's a ploy or it's, it's a move it's a power play do you think people, because of the stuff you're saying a lot of people will say that because they'll be like oh this guy's a clone this guy's botted this guy's whatever but it's not that i'm literally i can i can stare into the car i can do whatever i want it's my like perception of reality everyone's just seeing it through a camera it's your journey what's the matrix to you the society what is society with some way set this rules, regulations, beliefs, everything's set. All the media is made for you, everything's made for you, food is modified for you, scientific experience are made so everyone talks about whether it's an experiment or reality, conspiracies are made so everyone diverts their attention from the truth of the conspiracy by talking about the conspiracy. The matrix is a society. How would the world be a peaceful place? What do you think could should be eliminated to make it a better place? religion as the construct itself everything should be linked first that's why i said religion is the first start once we get that then everyone's points should get across in a more clearer way or everyone's chakras will be a bit more clearer because they will know about chakras so some people don't believe in chakras they say it's demon stuff some people believe that magic is demon stuff or this that and the other magic is every day of our lives we say spells we broadcast the spells i'm broadcasting spells to you right now what's your daily routine like spontaneous but uh, a set one is just me waking up call to action i'll look at my phone i'll get like a message from someone saying oh you have to do this like from the prior day so i remember i have to do that i'll write it down so i don't remember it i don't forget it again then i move on with the day I call a friend because i like to rule with my friends but i like to roll myself sometimes like i can roll anywhere by myself because of my energy like people come up to me they will ask me sometimes like what are you doing then i'll explain to them and then they're on my side, they're like, okay, I respect you still. And then they go on their way. So my life is just spontaneous. It's just whatever, I live in the moment. So whatever happens, happens in that moment. Has anybody ever tried to taste you? No. Like, there's been, like I, I faked a video on the internet where someone was chasing me. And obviously it just proves my point that you paint a picture like, like it's fake. The media is fake. Reality is an illusion and the media is a facade. I made a video of someone chasing me down the road and it went viral. And people were like, oh, this guy got chased, finally got what he deserved, this, that and the other. Everyone's just wishing bad because they want bad things to happen. Like they don't care about the good, they just only want bad. So I planned to play with my friend, told him to drive his car past, pull up, cop out the car, record me and I run down the road. Quick video right there, quick exposure. Quick people hating, quick people knowing that I'm I'm capping because some people know the truth, some people don't. Those who can be saved can be saved. How are your friends? How? Yeah, oh, how friends. are they? Are they in that same kind of journey or are they just thinking you're losing your fucking mind? They're on the same wavelength. One, two, three, four. About four of them. Everyone else I've cut off. I don't talk to nobody else. Everybody else is just trying to talk to me now. Trying to be like, what are you doing? What are you on? That's what they do. They try to divert you back into their reality, back into the matrix. Like, like, because everyone's actually programmed from the moment we're born. We're programmed. So everyone's just trying to be like, why? This guy's not living in society's rules. Bring him back into society. Bring him back into the matrix. And that's all it is. It's not a game, isn't it? It's, it's real life. life. Because it can't, you need to be careful because it can be a lonely journey going through a transition and changes and try to question everything and see the world differently. It can be exciting as well, but if nobody gets it, a lot of people can just fuck you off and that's okay as well. That's why I'm a philosopher. So all my stuff is theories until the book comes out and everyone can make their own interpretation. What stuff have you been reading? What's that? It's more, no, it's been intuition. Like I've just been having these subconscious thoughts, write it down that I believe that that is what it is. Then I'll search on the internet. There'll be a whole story on it. A lot of the times it'll be known as a conspiracy. And then I do my own intuition, logical or rational thinking, rational thinking. And then I make a conclusion and I write the conclusion. I link it to Bible quotes, Quran quotes. I link it to the Holy Scriptures. Any sort of old Holy Scripture, Bible, um, Quran, Torah, then all of the old ones from Hinduism, Buddhism, the first one, the Sanskrit, all of that stuff, I link it so it makes sense. 
and then no one can say nothing. It's all in the internet. All of my stuff's on the internet. I don't go down no dark web, though, no nothing, no conspiracies. I just go with logic. What about plans for the future? Where do you <sighs> see yourself? On top of the world. Doing what? Helping the world. Providing for the youth. My main goal is the youth. I want to start a charity, bring back youth clubs, adventures. Because I grew up in a youth club. I grew up in an adventure. I didn't have a phone because obviously I'm raised in Hackney. My mum was struggling. My mum couldn't even buy me a phone. So I went to adventure. I met friends, met people in the real world that portrayed good energies, portrayed bad energies. You see it for where it is when you're in the hood. It's mad. How do you, how do you become a better father? By believing that you can become a better father, by being there for your child. This is your child. You're there for your child. As long as you're there for your child, you're the best father you can be. Yeah, you're running. Like I say, anything in life is do what you want to do. As long as you're not harming kids and animals, anybody can do what the fuck they want and try to be a better individual. Listen, it's not as if you're, you've are you admitted some of the shit that you've done and put your hands up. It's not a big deal. People goes on. Obviously, it will maybe hang on to you for a, a, a while before people see you in a different light. But it's just about keep doing what you're doing. And like I say, if you're not harming anybody, and if you were in a house with your kid and somebody done that, you'd be thinking the exact same. So you're not daft. You know the uproar you've caused, but you, you're, you're gaining from it because you're, you're doing it and you're trying to promote a positive message. And that's all you can do. How do you then stay on the path and not try and get sidetracked, not try and smoke weed or get in trouble and do other daft shit? Obviously no, I still smoke <clears throat> weed occasionally, so that was kind of a lie, but it wasn't a lie because I don't really smoke weed as much as I do. <laughs> yeah. I contradict myself. <laughs> but like no, nah, like I used to smoke like twenty times a day. So compared to now, it's like once every four or five days, I'm improving. It's a slow improvement. Soon it will get to the point where I don't have to smoke at all. But it keeps me sane in this crazy world. That's the only reason I smoke weed. It keeps me saying with the knowledge that I don't have to go on a tangent. I can just be calm and just be high. Just embrace the highness sometimes. If Mizzy was Prime Minister, what changes would they make to make the world a better place? <sighs> what changes would I make? School system, tax system, all the systems, all the sort of systems. With a budget, like someone, like, they even look the call to action again, that like the same person I was about to talk about, she's right here. Big up Denise Headley. She was the one who told me to um, run for, like, mayor in the future. But essentially, it's changing all the systems with the budget that I have. The budget that the mayor has is crazy, bro. Like, you don't even need that much to do that. But money's an asset. We could always make more money. But when you make more money, it comes with inflation. It's just, they play the game and you guys, are, it's right there. They teach you this stuff in school. But... They teach you in school to brainwash you, bro. Like they teach you about inflation, they teach you about stuff going up and down. And then when you come out into the real world, the stuff's going up and down and you're still working for it. You're still, you still get taxed, you're still working then you get taxed by the government. They're still in what you work for, more of what you work for. You're working for them and they're still in what you work for. That's crazy. But essentially I would just change the way the whole system works. How's your mum been with all the attention and fame you're getting? Right now, my mom's barely been saying anything to me because she knows what it is. Like my mom, like my mom's been saying from young, "Oh, you're the chosen one." This and the other. Like she'd be saying this to me from young, but I like that's her. That's in her own way a call to action. Like you see how I was talking about call to actions. My mom doesn't even know why she's saying it. She's just saying it. That's a call to action within itself. And everyone else has their own call to actions. Like I'm not saying I'm the greatest person in the world. I'm literally everybody else. We're all human. I don't. I don't say I'm. I don't think I'm higher or below anyone. And that's why I don't really want to be in power. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to be a king or a prime minister. But I would only do it to share my message and get a direction across, so the rest of the history is perfect. So your better. book then. What's the plans with it? Can it go out that next year? This year? Are you still learning to put more information on it? I don't want, it's, like, it's only one book, like I can make multiple books. There's 33 chapters in this book and this book is the Mizzy Experiment. So this book is the baseline for all of my theories and my, my, con, my experiments I've conducted. So when that book comes out, everything I've been saying in videos or in the past, but everyone that wants to doubt me can read that book, another call to action. They can read that book and they can see what I'm saying and how logically I've made it in my own words. Because a lot of the stuff is from the internet. Yeah, I can get it from the internet, copy and paste. But... It's my word. It's my word for their word. Because their word is jambling, diverting, adding language. Because language, human language is made. There's different languages to keep everybody divide. Everything is a divide. They, the earth is flat. They cut up the planet. They cut up the lands. So everyone had to fly over in planes. Then they have planes, chemtrails in the planes to control the clouds. Do you ever watch David Dyke? Don't watch anybody. <laughs> Fair play to you. Listen, 
I like these chats because I'm in the same boat as you and question everything. There's a thing called the harp effect where it controls hurricanes, it controls the weather, it controls the rain, clouds, everything. Is everything just a big game where we are crazy? It, no, we are crazy. No, we are crazy. Bro, we make we make names for the hurricanes, bro. We're literally like, oh yeah, you remember that Hurricane Katrina or any hurricane? I don't even know the name, but the Hurricane Katrina is one I know. But when you're talking about these things, you're mentioning it as a name to make it seem like it's a, you're giving the name to it. Why are you giving a name to a natural disaster? Like, it's a natural disaster. Or it's not a natural disaster. God knows. Only God knows. How's it been with the, when you got all the backlash? How was the mental health? Did you ever struggle or did you just kind of go on with it and ride the wave? Go on with it. How do you think people watch no see this interview today? They're going to get a different angle of me because I, I feel like I, I portray myself in a good manner. You're speaking to Bakari right now, not Mizzy. Yeah, because the interviews that you've done, they've been terrible. Not from your part, but just the interviewers' part of just... It's not to put them down. Listen, Piers Morgan's the biggest in the UK with because of the guests and the profile he's got, but it's not a way to conduct an interview, no matter what your beliefs are. It's just to show people the understanding of the person you're talking to, and then people can go, do you know what, he's actually okay. And that's what it's all about. And then you have changed the mindset of others, and then you start getting support, because those videos will be there of you being the internet terror and causing mayhem and causing trouble and frightening people. But today shows, do you know what, a fucking kid's actually got his head screwed on and he's speaking some sense. A lot of people might not understand it and they will think you're fucking nuts. They think I'm nuts anyway, but that's okay. I can live with that. So how do you go forward? How do you move forward with the future? Keep learning, keep growing and, and keep trying to create a positive message. You've just said it for me. <laughs> just Subconsciously, keep... you just said it for me. Yeah. Would you like to finish up on anything, bro? Read whatever you've got to read, man. Get it out. Let's establish something. Yeah. I'm going to establish something still. We just got to establish it from now. And then no one can say nothing. The movement. We are sad. Being outside of your inner self, not letting nobody tell you nothing. The We Outside movement is a civil rights movement. <laughs> it's a civil rights movement, lads. It's established to remember that we are only human if we believe we are human. Our consciousness is scientifically not understood because we understand our own subconscious, bro. How can someone else tell you you're subconscious? Remember, everything is energy. We are the universe. The universe is us. Remember the social divide of the world. 1% of the population is in control of the other 99%. We are so distracted, manipulated by illusions, diversions, and social media, the biggest illusion. These are the things that we control the main, now these are the things that control the main vibration of the population, the main vibe. Oh, vibes, oh, you, you notice bad vibes. You're literally noticing the vibration. They put the vibration out for you. Our movement stands against all human hate crime, all discriminations against race, gender, or any sort of thing people classify as normal in their reality. Because who knows what reality truly is? Reality is what you make it, and life is for living, not being in fear of dying, and I mean, yeah, not being in fear of dying and living for somebody else. If you believe in yourself, which is believing in God, in the universe, you can do anything. Is it? Would you like to finish up with anything else? No. Listen, fair play. Thanks for coming on the show today. I wish you nothing but the best for the future. And if you ever need a hand with anything, you know I'm there for your support. God bless you, brother.